Today, some 3DFX cards need some help. This one here is a Voodoo 3 3000, as you can see unmistakably on the heatsink. This Voodoo 3 has a story to tell. This card comes from eBay and it was sold as is, and that is a bad sign. Usually, these cards do have issues. I don't know if it was the memory or if it's the core, because the owner told me that they're artifacts. Luckily, we can see here the heatsink is not glued to the chip, but yeah, we have to take that off and we have to look at the memory chips because they have been replaced. Here are the original chips and there are a few other ICs in there as well, I think. Oh no, these are all memory chips as it looks. But I think there is a broken one in there too. Anyway, we'll figure that out. So yeah, these memory chips that are on the card, they are new. Works with artifacts. Okay, so yeah, again, same as with other cards that I had on this channel. It could be a memory chip, it could be a connection, or it could be the 3DFX chip that's on the card. Either the chip is defective or we have a loose solder ball. And here is a second card. An Orchid Righteous 3D. And it says it's defective. If I remember correctly, this card is being detected in Windows, but the moment you start a 3D game, it freezes the system or you just get a black screen, something like this. I have a feeling it is related to the most common fault on these cards, which is a loose pin around the 3DFX chips. Well, most of the time it's multiple pins. So I will start with this one. Let's hop under the microscope. I already had a look. Believe me, you will be in for a treat. And you know what's also a treat? Ordering from PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all your PCB needs. They have a ton of options to pick from, including advanced multi-layer PCBs, cost-effective prototyping PCBs, flex and rigid flex PCBs, aluminum PCBs, metal core PCBs, high-frequency PCBs, and much more. The ordering process is quite simple. Once you get your hands on Gerber files, all you need to do is to upload them on PCBWay's website. Then, you can customize your order. One very important parameter is the thickness of the PCB. For instance, these memory modules should be 1.2mm thick. PCBWay offers many different colors for your solder mask and silk screen. But if you need a bolt design, you can also get multicolor UV printing for your PCBs. This will definitely make your design stand out. For surface finishing, if hot air solder leveling is enough, you can opt for Hazel. But if you need golden accents, then Immersion Gold is the way to go. You can also add stencils for easy DIY assembly or engage PCBWay's assembly service. And all that's left is to add the order to your card. Pay, and within a few days, you will hold your new PCBs in your hands. If that got you hooked, check out PCBWay.com and start building today. Links are in the video description. Okay then, let's have a look at the Voodoo 3. This is the back of the card, just a very brief scan if I can see anything suspicious. Well, we have something here, so we have to see where this one comes from. It's probably, I think this is the memory section on this side. Otherwise, I don't see anything of concern right now. Okay, let's check the front of the card. And... Okay, so we already have someone who worked on this card. This is Hard Flux. And there is also some solder left over. Okay, something to look at. And these ones have also been replaced, so I guess this card was recapped. Yeah, there's another one. You see a big solder blob. Not so good, not straight, but fine. Okay, so let's have a look at the memory chips. So here I see some of the legs don't have any solder. That's concerning. Mm, they do look like they have some solder, but just very minimal. Oh, and here's a solder bridge. So yeah, here's the first one. The owner told me that they have checked for solder bridges and they couldn't see any. This is so tiny, you need a magnification of some sort to find this stuff. And we have more solder bridges. So here is one and here is one. Okay. 
Yeah, soldering is not that good either. I'm not sure if this pin is connected. No, this one is loose. Doesn't have any connection to the pad. Here's the second chip. This one looks better, but also some of the solder connections are bad. And here we have bent pins and they're not soldered either. So yeah, this entire row here is not soldered. And here we have a broken trace. Here's another solder bridge. What are we up to now? Five and countless unsoldered pins. Okay, so I think the best course of action would be to take off the heatsink. Oh, now we have misaligned chips as well. Another issue. So the pins don't line up with the pads. And here I think is our copper wire that goes through that one wheel that we saw at the back of the card. And again, misaligned chips. So I have to take this off because um, this pad has to be restored properly. I want to put a proper pad there and remove the wire if possible. So for me, I'll have now probably two hours of work ahead of me. For you, maybe five to ten minutes of peaceful restoration. I hope the card works after that, but we'll figure this out once the memory is resorted to this card. So these, I think, are the original chips. And yes, there is a broken chip in there. How you can see it, and you see also the pins that go out of the packaging. It's really good that this heatsink can be removed. I really don't like that they glued heatsinks with epoxy on those cards, for some of them at least. 3 effects included, NVIDIA, ATI, everyone did it. It's so annoying. This one is perfect. And I especially like this one because it has these metal pins. It's not the stupid plastic ones. Oh, this is very little thermal paste on this one as well. Poor 3DFX chip. And here is our 3DFX chip. Looks good. I hope we don't have a problem under this chip. Now I can see there is something else under this chip, but I hope this is nothing serious. This is maybe just some dirt. Putting this card in a system in this state is absolutely useless. We've seen solder bridges, we have seen pads, misaligned chips. No, let's fix this first and then we will test. Ja, greiz bimmer und holer staudern. So yeah, unfortunately this card was in worse condition than I thought. I fixed one more trace here which was almost broken, I just reinforced it a little bit. Otherwise I think the card now is in good condition. We can't see any wires sticking out under this memory chip anymore. I added a pad and I realigned these two memory chips because they were just not straight on the pads. The others I just reflowed, removed all the solder bridges. Yeah, and now it's time for testing. Obviously, we will use a little bit more thermal paste. It will just squeeze out on the sides, but you'd rather have too much than too less. And yeah, this uh, heatsink is also clean, but 
it is not smooth. All these gaps in the heatsink will be filled by the thermal paste now. And two. So now uh, both prongs are through the card. Yeah, and our heatsink is back on. Let's see if we can see some thermal paste. Yes, now we have enough thermal paste. Uh, there is still a gap, so you see this between the aluminum heatsink and the plastic housing of the chip. So yeah, let's press this heatsink a little bit further down. Let it make nice contact. We'll see more thermal paste now. So we squeezed this out, but now the chip is nicely attached. So let's try this Voodoo 3 and see what we get. It would be a shame if it doesn't work. And, oh, that looks very good. Voodoo 3 3000. Let's hope the card is being detected by Windows. It's the only graphics card in my system right now. And so let's see. I think I have 3DFX Voodoo 3. Uh, yeah, let's try these drivers here. 3DFX Voodoo 3. That looks good. Resolution 640 by 480 RB. Wow, the image is very nice, very clear. Uh, why can't I change these ones? Default monitor. Oh, I need to change the monitor. Change. We go for the plug and play monitor, please. And we can change our resolution. Okay, perfect. Let's first see what we get in Everest. Just to see if everything is there. GPU, so we have AGP 2X, our 3DFX Voodoo 3 3000, and we do have SD RAM, we have 166 megahertz on the SD RAM, and GPU clock 166 megahertz. I think this is uh, the right frequency for this type of card. I think the Voodoo 3 2000 had 143 and the Voodoo 3 3500 had 183 megahertz. Now let's figure out how much memory do we have. Let's run 3D Mark. Okay, it detected the card. That's good. It should be 16 megabytes. And we have we have 15 written here, so that's interesting. Hmm. We have two. We have eight memory chips. Now this must be something wrong. If we get a clean picture, then I think this is just a display issue. I don't think we have a problem with the memory. And this looks really good. So I don't see any artifacts here. I think we should start maybe a more modern benchmark. Let's try 3D Mark 2000. I don't even want to continue this one. Let's try 3D Mark 2000. Uh, the graphics card can't do 32 bit. So, yeah, so this is the highest one we can go. Highest resolution. Let's do the both benchmarks and see what we get. But I think this Voodoo 3 is working perfectly. I also had a look at the Orchid Righteous 3D. Yeah, and it is one of these very common issues that you get on Voodoo cards. Detached pins, but also someone worked on this card before. Unfortunately, either they didn't use the correct tools or they didn't have proper magnification. But yeah, you can make it worse even though you're trying to make it better. So all I did was to reflow the pins around the TMU chip. The FBI chip surprisingly was okay. It was only an issue around the TMU chip. I cleaned up the card. I removed all the solder blobs that were scattered over the card. There was even one that was stuck to pins on the FBI chip. I'm not sure if this one would have caused the issues. I didn't try the card before because there is no point for me trying and make things worse. Well, depending on the condition of the card, but this card definitely. Why would I test something like this if it's clearly having issues? So yeah, what I understood is this card didn't work at all. When you plugged it into a system and you started a 3D game, the screen just remained blank or black. 
Now we can test the card and if there is still something wrong then we can go ahead and debug the card. Okay, and it's being detected by Windows. Unfortunately the Windows drivers are not really good. I usually update the drivers immediately because the drivers that come with Windows 98, they are not the greatest one for later games. They have all kinds of graphical issues. So yeah, for this we need the latest drivers and I'm using these ones here. And after a restart we should be able to figure out if this card works now or not. The first thing I do once I repair the Voodoo card is to run Mojo. Usually I use Mojo in DOS, but now we are in Windows and you can run Mojo in Windows. So the only thing that you have to do is opening the command prompt and start Mojo from here. And let's see what we get. Yes, we have a Voodoo board with 2 megabytes and 2 megabytes. Everything looks great, so we can continue with 3D tests now. Okay, and our Voodoo is detected. Let's change our resolution to 640 by 480, 16 bit color depth. This is all we have. And let's run the benchmark. Okay, and here we go. So the card is perfectly working. It was probably just some pins that were disconnected from their pads. So, yeah, I think this was a total success. We fixed both Voodoo cards. The Righteous 3D from Orchid, well, this was just a few pins around the TMU chip, and yeah, this is one of the most common faults on these cards. And luckily on the Voodoo 3, we only had the mess up with the memory. Everything else is perfectly fine, and that card hopefully will last for a very long time now. And yeah, from this repair, we can see that if you don't have a proper magnification and if you don't have the proper tools, it's almost impossible to do a good job. Even though these are not, by far not, the smallest components to work on, if you don't have the proper tools, you will not be able to get a good result. And the worst part is when you make it worse. So yeah, I'm very happy that I was able to rescue these two cards, and I hope that they will continue to render 3D games for a very long time. This is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you want to support me, head over to Patreon. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this project. Hit the like. And thank you so much to all my Patreons who are already supporting me. And thank you to PZBWay for sponsoring this video. Take care and bye-bye.